Hello. This Sunday, May 24th, Richard will be preaching from Deuteronomy 516 on parental honor, though our song choices will reflect a different theme. The Apostles' Creed affirms of Christ in his exaltation, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come again to judge the living and the dead. This Sunday, many churches throughout the world will give special attention to Christ's ascension and his session at the right hand of the Father. Though we do not strictly follow the liturgical calendar, we also will include hymns that praise God for our ascended reigning Savior. Some of you might have been reared in a church background that follows a comprehensive liturgical calendar. Some of you might hold to more Puritan-like sensibilities of viewing such calendar emphases as maybe even distracting from the theme which is to be celebrated every week of Christ's resurrection. Others, like myself, might come from a continental reform background that, while still maintaining that Sunday is the weekly holy day in which we rightly remember Christ's resurrection, we also recognize the five evangelical feast days, which include Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, Ascension, and Pentecost. Whatever your leanings as to the observance of the liturgical calendar, I believe it's helpful to consider the significance of and to praise God for this extremely important, though quite neglected, doctrine. The Heidelberg Catechism gives us practical insights to the question, how does Christ's ascension into heaven benefit us? It answers, first, he pleads our cause in heaven in the presence of his Father. Second, we have our own flesh in heaven, a guarantee that Christ our head will take us, his members, to himself in heaven. Third, he sends his Spirit to us on earth as a further guarantee. By the Spirit's power, we make the goal of our lives not earthly things, but the things above where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Though Christ's once for all sacrifice is complete, he continues to intercede for us before the Father. He is our great high priest, our great intercessor, advocating before the Father on our behalf. God's word assures us that if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is at the right hand of God, who always lives to make intercession for us. The incarnate Son of God remains eternally united to our human nature, fully God and fully man, truly God and truly man. In him, our flesh is already in glory that awaits us. And even now we are joined to Christ by his spirit. Our citizenship is already in heaven. In worship, in Christ our liturgist, our hearts are lifted up into the heavenlies. In our prayers, our high priest is before the Father pleading our cause. In our songs, our singing Savior is before the throne perfecting our praises. Presbyterian minister Garrett Scott Dawson beautifully summarizes the work of our incarnate ascended Savior. Christ descended to us in order to gather us up and bring us with him to his Father in heaven. I plan to play and sing Keith and Christy, Kristen Getty's There is a Higher Throne for the Prelude. Our first congregational song will be Agnus Dei by Michael W. Smith. Agnus Dei is Latin for Lamb of God. The traditional Agnus Dei is commonly sung in both Eastern and Western liturgical churches based on John 1 verse 29, where John the Baptist, upon seeing Jesus, said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Michael W. Smith's lyrics allude to the heavenly songs in Revelation 5. Alleluia, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Holy are you, Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. This will be followed with crown him with many crowns, calling us in the totality of our life and worship to cry, crown Christ, the Lamb upon the throne, the Lord of light, the Lord of love, the Lord of years, the Lord of heaven, to crown him Lord of all. Following the sermon, we will sing Charles Wesley's Love Divine, All Loves Excel.
Charles Wesley was the youngest son and 18th child of Samuel and Susanna Wesley. Of the staggering 6,500 hymns Wesley wrote, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling is one of his most popular. Interestingly, this hymn ends with the crown motif developed in the previous hymn, praying that the incarnate Christ by his spirit would dwell in us, complete his sanctifying work in us, and so finish his new creation, changing us from glory to glory, till we cast our crowns before him, lost in wonder, love, and praise. May the Lord bless you as you prepare for worship that in casting your crowns before our ascended Savior in worship, you also would be lost in wonder, love, and praise. <laughs> 